Hello everyone, today we're going to present the result of our research towards the topic 3. And here are the numbers name of our group. First of all, I'd like to make an introduction about the financial crisis in Asia. The Asian financial crisis was a period a financial crisis that gripped much of Asia beginning in July 1997. The crisis started in Thailand with the financial collapse of the Thai baht. Indonesia, South Korea and Thailand were the countries most affected by the crisis, and Hong Kong, Malaysia, Laos and the Philippines were also hurt by the slump. The Asian miracle appeared to come to an abrupt end in late 1997, when in one country after another, local stock markets and currency markets imploded. And here comes to our first research topic, is that how did the financial system in Asia contribute to the financial crisis in the 1990s? The first point we considered was about the currency system, which is um, most started in Thailand. And here are the main uh, inflows of the currency crisis in Thailand. Then the contagion occurred, which means following the devaluation of Thai baht, wave after wave of speculation hit other Asian countries also. Although there were and remain important differences between the individual countries, a number of elements were common to most. Exports had long been the engine of economic growth in these countries. Uh, the mainly affected countries was uh, like Indonesia, South Korea, Philippines, and Japan. Here are the several charts which shows the devaluation of countries towards Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Philippines. Secondly, the financial and government policies were considered by us. As this were known, even where managed banks or financial intermediaries are vulnerable to panics, panics because they traditionally engage in maturity transformation. Maturity transformation is beneficial because it can make more funds available to productive long-term investors than they would otherwise receive. Under normal conditions, banks have no problem managing their portfolios to meet expanded withdrawals. However, if all deposits decide to withdraw their funds from a given bank at the same time, as in the case of a panic, the bank will not have enough liquid assets to meet its obligations. Seriousing the viability of an otherwise solvent financial institution, and then the lack of insensitive for risk management, the importance of implicit government, guarantees in the most effective economics is highlighted by the general support given to financial institutions experiencing difficulties. For example, the South of Korea, the very high overall debt ratios of corporate conglomerates suggest that these borrowers were unlimited counting on government support in case of adverse outcomes. This was confirmed by events in 1997. By the mid-1990s, South and East Asia was in the grips of an unprecedented investment boom. Much of it financed was with borrowed. When the government encouraged banks to extend emergency loans to some troubled con conglomerates, which were having difficult servings, their debts, and supplied special loans to weak banks. This response further weakened the financial position of leaders are contributed to the uncertainty that fitted the financial crisis towards the end of 1997. After the previous explanation, here comes the conclusion of this part that we drew. First, rapid growth disguised the extent of risky lending. For many years, such growth allowed financial policies that shielded firms that incurred losses from the adverse effect of their decisions. However, such policies would make it 
economy is highly vulnerable during periods of uncertainty. Also, the second innovations in information and transactions technology have linked these countries more closely to world financial markets in the 1990s, thus increasing their vulnerability to change, change in market sentiment. Next is the second part of the presentation. The system changed since the crisis is so important. The financial crisis resulted from the fast rise of large amounts of capital from Asian countries that lack the system of regulation and whose foreign exchange rate proved brittle. While technical improvement in the financial system were institution, institution, the crisis did not bring fundamental structural reversions in both political and economic areas, starting resistance from interest in the US, the UK, and the IMF prevented the reforms and the rearrangement in the international financial system from happening. Um, so next is liberalization within a state policy framework. Regulation to conflict capital inflow, lack of experience and expertise the predominance of short-term debt. Newly licensed banks, which is with risky leading practice and uh, unproductive uh, investment. And the third is the casting crisis and non-crisis economics. China and Taiwan were not affected as much as Thailand, Indonesia, and Korea. The combination of capital account liberalization and in and in an inflexible exchange rate was a common characteristic of heavily affected countries. Uh, the last one is the polit politics of financial policy. Why reform in financial sector is so difficult? Influences on financial arrangement in Asia. First, relative strength of social and uh, economic se sectors. Second is the degree of concentration of the financial sector. Third is the particular links between individual financial institutions and state organs. Last one is the degree of foreign participation in financial sector. Here I'm going to talk about the response and uh, architecture. Financial liberalization carries substantial risks as well as benefits. Capital controls will decrease the speculating money, but opposition to capital control group like IMF. Reintroduction of capital control would be difficult in its implementation and discourages investment and growth. Selective actions to limit trading currencies and derivatives in Taiwan, Philippines, and Hong Kong. Measures to improve prudential regulation increase the rate of banks' capital risk to rates adjusted assessed to 8% or higher. Increase in stronger assessment of non-performing loans, increasing dependencies, and unity of oversight agencies. An initial crisis led to bring various proposals of global financial reforms. The panic stricken called for the need for restrictions on speculative capital and cooperation on monetary affairs at the regional level in Japan, Austria, and some European countries. But some argued that floating rates were not risk free. Division between twin Washington based institutions. IMF and WB was dependent. A reforming IMF. IMF is institutionalizing the moral hazard and encourages speculators to undertake dubious investments. And criticism against condi <coughs> conditionality by IMF during the Asian. And proposal for establishing IMF by Japan, Taiwan, which was killed by the U.S. opposition. This idea is unlike 
way to come to. The crisis has shown East Asian economics together, realizing that they do not have an effective voice in the governance of the monetary system. This led to the effort to establish a representational organization for region. The outcome remains to be seen. Conclusion. The most important long-term impact of the East Asian financial crisis has been that it began a process that led to the collapse of the IMF's influence over middle-income countries. This was partly a result of the fund's role in the crisis, which was widely seen as a major failure. Partly as a result of this experience, the middle-income Asian countries have accumulated large reserve holdings and have, for the most part, removed themselves from this influence of the fund. In recent years of availability of alternative sources of credit, especially in Latin America, has led to the collapse of the IMF's creditors cartel in that region and among middle-income countries generally. This is the most important change in the international financial system since the breakdown of the brittle wood system in 1973. The Asian financial crisis resulted from the sudden flight of large amounts of capital from Asian countries that lacked adequate systems of prudential regulations and whose foreign exchange rate proved disastrously brittle. The crisis was unique in its unprecedented severity of corporate distress and banking sector problems and its quickness in recovery from the crisis, while technical improvements in the financial system were institutionalized and crisis did not bring fundamental structural revisions in both political and economic arena. Dante resistance from entrenched ideologies and interest in the US, the UK and the IMF prevented the reforms and rearrangements in the international financial system from happening. This is the third part of our presentation. It's related to the potential problems in Asian financial system. First, the keyword is inflation. The developing inflation is continuously happening in Asia, uh, Asia area. As food prices and energy prices continue to be rising rigidly, Asian countries are getting influence from its reality. Especially for India, Vietnam, Indonesia, and China, developing countries which are adjusting economic scale are stuck in inflation issues. As the fact of my home country, China, the most recent inflation rate reached a new high of about 22 months. At the same time, food prices rose by 7.5%, and now food prices only used by only 1.5%. As a detailed case of China, their institutions predict that 2010 Chinese GDP, GDP goes right to 10.3%, while the inflation pressures will also appear. Although Chinese economic growth manual remains robust, but consi considering of the uncertainty of the Euro European economy, China's monetary policy may shift as well as the developed countries have created erasing policy. China's economic growth showed in the third quarter of real estate prices rebounded sharply or will become one of the major risks of China's economy. The big threat does not stop here. The war broke up in the exchange rate on the premise of hot money has been pegged 
into Asia world. For this reason, another challenge facing Asia is control capital inflow. How money inflows too much, too fast, sparking a set of troubles and raise the factors of prosperity. From the depression, Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia, and some other country and region have all allowed the currency to appreciate. As another developed case, as another developed case for Japan. The Japanese government has started inversion in current market, emerging economics, and some other export-oriented statements. South Korea also won't throw to buy dollars in order to avoid increase in holding of U.S. Treasury bonds in March this year, has reached the highest point since the 39.3 billion. Vietnam is several times the devaluation of the currency to foster exports. Some analysts believe that such performance steps from the rapid growth of the European economy and the slow growth of the Asian economics is no sign of interest rates in Europe and America, which will push a global capital and reserve materials in emerging Asian countries. This invest a big opportunity in, in particular emerging Asian markets, including China, Taiwan, India, Malaysia, South Korea, and Thailand have already entered high cycle. The next rate hike expectation in the future is expected to continue to drive global capital inflows. This is the end of our, our presentation, and here is the list of reference.